everyone, I'm Drew Rehan from Singapore and I am participating in the Rescue First Steps U19 category. I have been doing robotics competitively for about 2 years now, but I've always taken on a more hardware-oriented role in the competitions I've participated in, like the RoboCup Singapore Open 2019 and RoboCup Sydney 2019 in the Junior Soccer Lightweight category, so this is my first time programming in a competition. Here's a quick summary of the challenge. The main idea behind it is to collect the optimal combination of objects and deposit as many times as possible within the 5 minutes to maximize the score. Part of this involves avoiding traps to prevent losing points and objects to the penalty, as well as avoiding walls to prevent slowing down or flipping. At its core, the challenge is a search problem and the main priority is ensuring that a robot can find the objects and deposit zones quickly. To address this challenge, I've simplified it into three questions. 1. How does a robot move around the map? 2. How will the robot decide where to go? And 3. How will the robot score points? The solutions to these problems are basic movement, directed movement, and scoring actions, each addressing their respective question. Overall, the strategy I utilized was highly effective and reliable. On to the algorithms. The solutions can be further broken down into individual functions, as shown on the slides, that work together to enable the robot to solve the overall mission. However, their efficiency may vary based on the map, so it is important for further optimizations to be made. Before I move on to the functions, here's some background on the strategy. Firstly, with regards to soft code and hard code, the former is generally preferred. Soft code offers greater flexibility, especially in view of the random nature of object generation around the map. A fixed hard-coded route is unable to account for this, which would cause the robot to miss out on objects. Hard coding is reserved for optimizations to help the soft code further adapt to the map. For the scoring strategy, objects are deposited in a set of 2 red, 2 black, and 2 cyan objects, which awards 180 bonus points. This means that every deposit is at the very least worth 360 points. As you can see from this chart, RRBBCC has the highest minimum score per deposit and one of the higher maximum scores per deposit, only being beaten or matched by combinations that rely more on black objects. Additionally, it is much less dependent on obtaining objects from the double zone due to the guaranteed 180 point bonus, making it the most consistent choice as long as the distribution of the three colors of objects on the map are roughly equal. Now for the functions. To start, there is a move function and its use is quite self-explanatory. It accepts two variables, speed and steer, to change the values of wheel left and wheel right to achieve its purpose. For example, by having wheel left be smaller than wheel right, the robot can turn leftwards. Next, wall avoidance calculates a value for steer so that the robot can turn away from walls to prevent collisions. The value scales proportionally based on how close it is to the wall, so the closer it is, the more it will turn. Also, the robot will turn towards the side with more space to move around based on the ultrasonic sensor's readings. Meanwhile, trap avoidance causes the robot to reverse and turn out of the yellow warning zone of a trap to prevent the robot from triggering it. The maximum speed of the robot is set where this function is successful 100% of the time. The first part of directed movement involves square targeting, the ability of the robot to move to a desired set of coordinates. The map is divided into a 3x3 grid, and this function calculates a target angle that the robot should face to navigate to a set of given coordinates on the map. The value of steer scales proportionally based on the difference between the compass reading and the target angle, allowing the robot to quickly turn to face the target angle without overshooting. You may remember that wall avoidance also calculates a value for steer, and this necessitates the combination of the two values, Tanchu taking away the average. This allows the robot to navigate to the desired coordinates while retaining the ability to avoid obstacles. The second part involves deriving a set of coordinates with probability maps. They account for various attributes of the map like objects and traps. Before the desired coordinates are found from this, a distance penalty and a heat map penalty are applied as optimizations. The maps give the robot the ability to target squares where it will have the highest probability of finding certain landmarks, which is crucial for the robot to find objects and the deposit zones quickly. This greatly increases the speed at which a set of RRBBCC can be collected and deposited compared to random movement. The last group, scoring actions, is more simple. 
A noteworthy point here is that the robot keeps track of the number of objects of each color that it has picked up, so that it will not pick up more than two of them in order for it to deposit the set of RRBBCC. Additionally, using a range of values will address the issue of the robot traveling too fast and not slowing down enough to stop on the object. This allows picking up to be much more consistent. Finally, we have the depositing function. Once the robot obtains a set of RRBBCC, its main priority immediately becomes depositing and it uses probability maps to find a nearby deposit zone. The robot will move until both color sensors see the orange zone to prevent the deposit from failing. Moving on to debugging. The functions are generally working as intended, but I had to go through many rounds of debugging, mainly involving printing out all the variables used in a function that I suspected was causing the problem. This would allow me to better identify and isolate the bug. The root cause is usually minor syntax errors or clashing statements in the code causing unintended effects on the performance of the robot. They can be pretty hard to spot due to the length of my rather inefficient code. In conclusion, with this strategy, the robot is able to pick up and deposit sets of RRBVCC reliably and relatively quickly, indicating that the strategy is successful. However, there is always room for improvement. In terms of efficiency and effectiveness, the trap and wall avoidance functions can be further refined to improve their performance and consistency. I had a few learning points while preparing for this competition. Since I had practically no experience with C, having to write the code in C was a great opportunity for me to start learning the basics. Additionally, writing and debugging these functions taught me to break a problem down into simple parts that I am able to solve with what information I have, allowing me to find a solution faster. My most important takeaway is this, don't ever give up on or procrastinate finding a solution to a problem. No matter how daunting the task is, leaving it for later will only further complicate matters. That's all from me, thank you for watching and have a great day.